Hello, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith, and um, since my last video was uh, so important, the concepts of uh, wet bulb temperature, I thought I'd give a little executive summary. So I've just um, been walking downtown, and uh, I've got my buddy here, Newton, and I just found a quiet space. So there's what you can see behind there is Parliament Hill in Ottawa, capital of Canada. And uh, this region, this whole street and region was occupied by trucks for three weeks uh, back in uh, late January, starting in late January for the first two weeks of February. And um, <coughs> now there's this um, sort of follow-up. Uh, I don't know if it's connected or not, um, but it, they, it's called Rolling Thunder. A whole bunch of motorcycles supposed to be converging downtown. I don't see very many motorcycles, uh, but it's another one of these so-called uh, right-wing uh, protests. I mean, who knows what they're protesting? It's supposed to be anti-vaccine stuff, but you know, Canada has relaxed uh, the um, you know all, pretty much all the restrictions except for masks in hospitals and a few things like that. And, uh, and uh, anyway, that's my backdrop to this video. So, so the, uh, the key thing I'd like to talk about right now is uh, just give a very short summary of, of the uh, key points um, in the last video, because some of you may not have time to uh, you know, go through it all. So the key point is that the, um, we're, I want to talk about the tolerance to high heat and high humidity for the human body. And this has a huge implications, of course. We're undergoing a record heat wave right now uh, in India and Pakistan. It's affecting a billion people. And people need to be aware of these things in order to protect themselves against the heat and see, you know, know the symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke and get to cooler areas. Um, you know, for life preservation. So, you know, very important. So the human body, core body temperature is 98.6 Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's close to that anyway. A new study shows that it may actually have changed in the last hundred years, which is interesting. So 37 Celsius is the in internal core body temperature. So the skin's a bit cooler. It's about 35 Celsius. Now, when we're at 35 Celsius outside, the ambient temperature and 100% humidity, you know, your body sweats, can sweat, but the sweat won't evaporate off your skin. And it's the evaporative cooling which is so efficient to cool the human body uh, when it's hot and humid. So under those conditions, uh, the theory said that you would not be able to throw off heat by sweating because be, the sweat would not evaporate on your skin. There'd be no evaporative cooling. So your body core temperature would, would rise and rise and rise over time. If you were in that environment, you would get undergo hyperthermia as opposed to hypothermia, right? If you're too cold, hy hyperthermia, too hot. Um, and your body uh, organs would start shutting down. So after a couple hours, you have heat exhaustion, dizziness, fainting, maybe throwing up, feeling, uh, you know, very, very sick. And then after about uh, six to eight hours, you have heat, heat stroke and die in that environment. At least that was the, that's a theoretical number. Now, surprisingly enough, there's been very, very few studies that have actually measured if that is actually holds or not, if there's some other mechanism that would limit the temperature to below that 35. And it turns out that the practical uh, wet bulb temperature that the human body can withstand is much, much lower than 35 Celsius at 100% humidity. In fact, it's a more closer to 31 degrees Celsius with 100% humidity. This is measured, this study measured uh, the body, the, the response of 24 people, young, healthy pe pe people, males and females. What they did is they put a uh, temperature sensor the person ingested a temperature sensor, which um, uh, had telemetry to a uh, computer, so they could know uh, continuous real-time measurement of the body core temperature. And then they changed the ambient temperature in the room where people were exercising, uh, you know, mild, mild exercise, very uh, low core exercise. And they found <coughs> 
that um, the temperatures that people could withstand before their core body temperature started rising were, were only about 31 degrees Celsius. Um, and this was over multiple subjects. 31 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity, and not 35. So there's other mechanisms that come in to make our, the human body less tolerant to heat and humidity. So the threshold is much lower than that theoretical 35. And this is, this is when the temperature was, was warm and the humidity was very, very high. So for example, you know, maybe 40 degrees Celsius with 70% humidity, you know, and so on. But when the temperature is extremely high, say 50 degrees or whatever, and very, very dry, if you calculate the wet bulb temperature, and there's a wet bulb temperature calculator, which I showed, uh, just Google wet bulb temperature calculator, you can find many. Um, so in very hot and dry conditions, the equivalent wet bulb temperature that people could withstand and maintain their body core temperature was only 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, which is much, much lower than the 35 Celsius. So this is a hugely significant finding. I also showed um, in the last video in detail, I showed a bunch of other papers. One of the papers was on wet bulb temperatures around the world and how we're getting very, very high te wet bulb temperatures around the world. The India-Pakistan heat wave right now, they reached uh, wet bulb temperatures of 29 Celsius. In the Persian Gulf, next to the, um, next to the ocean inlets in there, uh, when the sea surface temperature reaches about 31, 32, it typically does that now then that means the wet bulb temperature on the immediate coastlines are that 31 or 32. They match the sea surface temperature because there's a lot of evaporation there and the humidity can be 100% along the coastline. So those are very, right now, you know, I was expecting that there, there wouldn't be huge mortalities until we reach that 35 degree sea surface temperature or 34. But it turns out that with this new study, you know, 31, 32 are enough to cause large mortalities on the coastlines. Uh, people can literally drop like flies when that threshold is reached and they can't be working outside. So, so this is a, a very important, very, very important uh, uh, finding. I also talked about a bit about acclimatization because the study with the 24 subjects, I think 13 female, 11 male, um, at Penn State, you know, those are young, healthy people that are living, you know, probably university students, undergrads or grad students at Penn State. And uh, those people, hey, come on. <laughs> Is he okay there? Yes. Okay. And, and those people, um, you know, they're not acclimatized to any warm conditions. Now, there is such a thing as acclimatization, where people living in warmer climates become more used to living the warmer, the, the heat and humidity in the warmer climates. And, and, you know, there's also acclimatization in cold climates. People living in Canada, you know, their blood gets thicker, the cold doesn't affect them as much. Um, the body, the physiology of the body changes by a number of different ways. One thing is that the, you know, when you're living in a very, very warm climate, your core body temperature naturally drops a little bit. Your resting heart rate uh, drops a little bit and your skin temperature drops a little bit to help you acclimatize to those uh, hotter and more humid conditions. So there was none of the acclimatization effect that studied in this Penn State study. So also the other key factor is these were all young, healthy people in the Penn State study. We know that as you get older, your metabolic rate slows down and you're more susceptible to heat exhaustion and heat stress. You can't withstand the high temperatures and humidity that young, healthy people can. So that's an important factor. Also, the very young people are, cannot uh, uh, withstand those temperatures and humidities, like babies and toddlers. Their sweat glands have to develop. They can't throw off heat like uh, you can when you're older, so they're much more susceptible and at risk. Anybody with obesity or underlying uh, medical conditions um, uh, are more at risk of the heat stress. And also, um, if you're taking medications like the antidepressants, antipsychotics or whatever, um, uh, those and other medications can reduce your tolerance to withstand uh, heat stress. So all of these factors uh, play in. So it's very important to educate yourself about these effects. Know when you're going to be in a, in a heat environment that's uh, you know extremely problematic 
and uh, prepare accordingly. A couple things, a couple points that I really emphasize is to cool down your core body temperature, the quickest way is to, you know, if you run inside and put your wrists under, run hot water over your wrists for several minutes and that cools the, there's a lot of blood flow through into your hands, through your wrists and that, uh, that, that cools your body quickly. Or, you know, of course, immersing your face in, in cold water uh, works very, very quickly. Or pouring cold water, you know, if you're lying down, pouring it on, onto uh, your wrist or your neck or having a wet rag. Um, fans inside help a lot by circulating the air. And uh, I've talked, if, if you have to work outside in hot environments, there are some technologies that are being developed to allow you to, to cool your body in those situations talking, I call them chill suits. I really like the idea of using the photoelectric, uh, not photoelectric, but TE, thermoelectric coolers to, um, to uh, you know, you can wear these suits and you can have a rechargeable battery to, uh, to go on this chip. Uh, thermoelectric cooler, my dog's just chewing something, uh, don't, not, not good. I uh, got it out of his mouth, sorry. Um, you know, those sort of things. There's, there's different technologies, different ways to remain cool. And uh, these sort of things are going to be vital for survival uh, for people, uh, you know, as we move forward and the climate gets warmer and warmer and warmer and there's more for every degree temperature, uh, degree Celsius temperature rise, there's 7% more water vapor in the atmosphere, so humidity can be much, much higher. You know, as we go into this warmer, more humid world, it's going to be essential that people take precautions uh, in order to uh, survive. So thank you for listening. I hope this summary uh, explains uh, things in a succinct fashion uh, compared to my last video. Look at my last video for, for all the details. And uh, I'll just pan over again to Parliament Hill to see what's happening and uh, just pan over to see what, uh, what, my, what this guy's up to. Hey Newton, do you want to say hi? Hey, what are you do chewing? I have a perfectly good ball. Oh my God, he's just chewed my little container, which I had my earphones in. Okay, all right, well, okay, bye for now. Talk soon.